All right. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Zenfolio Live. I'm Robert with Zenfolio Customer Success. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for hanging out with us through that really crazy technical difficulty. Sorry about that, you guys. I do apologize. We were having some crazy issues getting the Zoom feed to start to YouTube, but I had to do a quick reset. And I think we got it to go. But hey, thanks for joining us today. If this is your first time hanging out with us, make sure you say hi to us in the chat. Let us know where you're from. We really appreciate you guys who come out here week after week and hang out with us. I've got a really special guest today. Uh, I'm going to be talking about intentional website design with wedding photographer Evan Chung. We're going to be talking about what is the purpose of your site? What do you want visitors to do? How are you going to help them get there? We're going to go through some good examples and some bad examples. Um, some quick announcements really quick. First, got, uh, I've got Dennis hanging out, taking care of you guys in chat. Make sure that you show him some love. He does a great job of helping me out on Thursdays. So I really appreciate Dennis. It looks like Katie's hanging out with us too. So I really appreciate Katie being there with us. Uh, a few announcements. Next week on Zenfolio Live, we're going to be talking about contactless workflow. Um, so make sure you join us for that one. And then August 13th, again, is going to be our 200th live stream. We're going to have another special guest on. We're going to be doing some really cool things. So make sure that you join us for that one. And don't forget, we continue to challenge you guys to post something positive daily on your social media channel. And when you're doing it, use that hashtag Zenfolio Photographers. All right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our guest. So let me stop sharing my screen right here. His work has been featured in several online publications such as Borrowed and Blue, Something Turquoise, Wedding Wire, Sweet Violet Bride, and The Knot, just to name a few. He's totally infatuated with moose and he's not afraid to show it. He loves coffee and outdoor adventuring, collects jackets and camera gear. Help me walk, welcome wedding photographer, Evan Chung to Zenfolio Live. Hey, Evan, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks, Robert. That was a nice intro. Thanks. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I, hey, I'm so glad that you're here hanging out with us today. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to jump on here, to spend some time with us, uh, to have a chat with us. I know you got a lot of knowledge that you need to, uh, or you want to pass down to people who are um, building websites through Zenfolio or just in general running their business uh, online. So, um, Really quickly, I would like to hear a little bit, and I think everybody would like to hear a little bit about your story, uh, just about photography, what it means to you, how you got into it, that that whole that whole story, because I, I bet it's interesting. They're, they're always interesting, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, some of it, it's interesting and it's not interesting, right? It's the typical story of like, hey, so I took this class in high school and I really loved holding a camera and I really love creating visually stimulating images. There's that piece to it, right? And that's the whole ember that starts it off, right? There's always something in someone's life that is interesting to them and they love it. And it becomes this avalanche of passion for them. For me, you know, honestly, it was into photography through high school and in college. Uh, I went to UC Berkeley um, and a lot of that was was um, visual arts um, as well as business. And um, that kind of got me going with photography. But where I think the passion really came to life for me is when uh, I got married and saw some of the stuff that happened behind the camera for my photographer, a buddy of mine. And then I then second shot with him. And I just kind of fell in love with it. Uh, and it, it, it it's funny too, because it's not just the, the romance of, of weddings that kind of lures me in. It's also like the, the, the challenge. I really love the fact that every day is different, a little cliche, but every wedding is different. But the challenge at each different wedding is the same in that you got to nail those portraits. You have to be a master of light of motion, of candid shots, photojournalist. You have to be a portrait director. You have to know how to do macro really well. It's just, it's this huge uh, mix, this grab bag of different stuff that you have to employ on that really high pressure day. I feel like if I didn't uh, do um, photography, then I would want to go and like work in an ER, something like that, because I, I, I really thrive 
on lots of things coming at you at once and then also keeping like a positive mentality. Um, maybe that's the difference in why I don't work in an ER because it's not so positive sometimes. But so that's for me, like, you know, weddings, weddings, particularly portrait work are really exciting for me. I love the challenge. I love the, the, the variety um, and the thing that it, that really keeps me going in that specific vein of, of photography is, is just having to be a master at different things all the time and then being able to learn all the time. Cause like, I'm not a master of it all. <laughs> and so you get to learn all of this uh, so often and so quickly. It's just super fun. So. I love what you say there. Right? Cause I think like for me, when I think about wedding photography, obviously I don't claim to be a wedding photographer. I've Sure. done a few weddings and uh for me it's like the x games of photography like it's yeah everything extreme one end to the other and then on top of that like you said you're this real high pressure day but then you got to have people skills as well that are on point because even if you produce really beautiful images if you don't make that experience something special as well and you don't um get along and and you know have really good chemistry with the people that you're working with like that has a huge impact as well um gosh i'm distracted i just read zach's comment on the thing uh funny guy i um it's fun for me specifically because it's 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 a you're a hat rack right not only do you have to be the artist uh you have to produce beautiful images but you you also have to be this people person right you're a coordinator right? you move people you work with them they have to not hate you because they want to smile for you right that's important and then you got to be this uh this business uh expert you got to drive everything and drive more content as well as also make sure that you have this great pipeline and this process in place and the editing i mean it's Everyone on this line probably knows all about what it's like to be a sole proprietorship or an LLC. And there's just so much to it. And so to be able to say like, you know, I, I shoot weddings is, is, is really fun to be able to say that, but there's also like so, so much more to it. And you guys, I feel like everyone on this line probably <laughs> gets that, but there's a lot to it and it's fun. It's enjoyable. So, a couple of things I'm interested in. What is your approach to wedding photography? I mean, obviously, almost every bride and groom you have to approach differently. Some people take like the more photojournalistic style where they're like, hey, I'm going to hang back. I don't want to get involved. I just want to capture it as it happens. Yeah. Um, do you kind of take all of the different styles and like modify it for each wedding? Or is there a particular way that you like to handle things? I mean, there's, it's definitely a little bit of both, but I lean towards the latter. Right. If they're going to come to me for a particular style, they're going to see it in the portfolio. You know, there's always um, if you've been shooting long enough, you'll always have that client that comes to you and is like, hey, so I really wanted this, which is interesting because my portfolio looks like this. Um, but I think in general, I definitely lean towards the photojournalism. Um, right. I, I get excited about being able to um, help write these stories for them as they look back on what happened on this day, being able to kind of, um, craft this storybook with them is really, is really exciting. Um, and I think I get most passionate also about the portraiture of the day, um, whether they're looking at the camera or not, but I will also say, um, you know, a lot, there's a lot of customers in this, right? Yes. The bride and groom are my primary clients, but grandma's buying images too, right? Mom is buying images. There's other folks at the party who will buy images. And so like as a business person, I have, I have other customers involved as well. So there's, um, there's the portrait work, which is a lot for my, my clients, my bride and groom. But on the flip side, there's a lot of um, family straight at the camera. Everyone does cheese and like, those sell as much as some of the gorgeous backlit solar flare at, you know, golden hour, you know? So it, it's funny because like my style would definitely lean towards photojournalism. Um, but we try to capture a variety because we know that we're actually, there's a huge audience that we're, that we're trying to um, deliver for. Absolutely. And, and speaking of portfolio, so, um, how important to your wedding business alone is your website? Like how big of a role does that play in your business? 
It's huge. Between the website and the word of mouth and reviews, that's a hundred percent of where I drive my pipeline. Like all the, all the new clients that come my way, like I have advertised in the past and I have done different stuff and I have, I've kind of gotten scrappy and done my own advertising and stuff like that. But like, as I track them, it always comes back to that one, you know, word of mouth, one-to-one referrals. Um, and then, you know, so much of what we do these days is shot for Yelp, right? Um, getting that review and making sure that they're, they're trusted third-party voices. Um, so I think for, for, for me, those are, those are huge. And the website plays such a massive piece of that because it's really your digital handshake before they get to meet you and make eye contact with you. It, it's, it's their first touch point with who you are and what you do. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the reason I wanted to have you come on today is because your website, first of all, your photos are amazing, but your website has always been used at Exo- at Zenfolio as an example site, just because of how well it's set up, how well it flows, kind of the thought process that you put behind it. I think it's a great example of a purposely designed site. So I think so many times um, people start out at building their site and they're not really sure what to do and they just try to make it look good. And, um, and they don't really put a thought process behind what's the purpose? Like, what am I, what's my purpose of my site? Uh, what am I trying to get people to do? How am I going to get them there? And I think your site is such a great example of that. I'm going to go ahead and share it here in a second. But can you kind of just talk to me a little bit about the p- thought process that you have or that you maybe you had or you continue to have sure. as you're looking at your site, designing it, kind of the steps that maybe you go through? Let me share my screen and get your Yeah, site. while you're sharing your screen, Corey Woods, I've gotten Ed Norton for sure. Um, I've definitely gotten <laughs> that said to me before. Uh, Keanu Reeves, I've gotten as well. I'm not sure I see that one as much, but I, I, um, <laughs> I've gotten both of those comments. Uh, I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm also just tracking some of the top chatter that's going on. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. The, uh, the things that kind of, so I, man, I won't say that my website is anything more than it, it's just a, it's just, I, I feel like it's a, purposefully thought through web design. Um, and so I stand by it there, but I, I also don't think it's like the best of the best, right? I'm, I'm not going to stand here and say like, this is the, I just, it's just not true. Right. But I will say um, that I thought a lot about the flow that a customer or someone just checking out my website is going to use when they go through my website. So the intentionality there is very thought through thinking through the journey that someone has when they're experiencing my work and, um, and then eventually, hopefully, ideally experiencing me, right? So um, it looks like I have remote control here. Let's, let's test this baby out. But, you know, on my homepage, like I want people to experience my images, right? They are here to... Like it's not like all the all the things I'm gonna say feel like gut right. They're just like, well, yeah, duh, Evan. Like, of course. But the thing is, I'm using those as as like a baseline for how I'm designing the the flow for the website. So the first thing people want to do is experience my images. Um, I really, really want to make sure that they get a chance to see the depth and breadth of some of my work. And I don't want the lift and the bar to have to be too high or heavy for them to experience that. So I have a variety of work um, and uh, I want to give them a a cross section of it on the homepage and I use all the space, right? It's edge to edge. And I've done that. I've done, I've I've had different websites over the course of my career, but I've landed and stayed with an edge to edge design simply because it lets folks experience the websites as I would like them to, which is big in your face, like get in there. Um, So for me, as I'm thinking through, as I'm thinking through like how a, a person is experiencing my website from here, this is like, someone comes to the website and like, okay, great. They're on the homepage, but like what else, right? What about the specific, like the specific 
stuff that um, that he does. Let me see. I'm not able to. I don't think it lets me hover. Okay, there it is. So if they go to portfolio, right? I'm on homepage, and then my first item is portfolio after home, and it goes in descending order of the things that I prioritize in my business. When I talk about my wedding business, it is for sure a obviously I think I just said it, a wedding business, right? It's a it's it's primarily for weddings. So that's the first in my portfolio. And I really just go in that order, right? It's the wedding business that drives my work. It's what pays the bills, what keeps me in my home with my mortgage, right? This is important for me. So it starts with that. Um, I also like to use very specific SEO rich language when titling my pages, San Francisco Bay Area wedding photographer. Um, and then I always try to have like a call to action in the top. Um, because that's ultimately when they finish with the different pages, that's where I want them to go, right? And then I also have, I don't want them to get sucked in too much to the text on my images, but I want it there for SEO purposes. It's already there. I don't have to like click anything. It hovers, which is really nice because it means it's not too distracting, but it's there for SEO purposes. I really like that feature. Um, and so that goes the same. Every page is um, obviously portfolio driven. Uh, you have engagement work, but each is the same in terms of the title of the page and um, obviously the call to action. So that continues through boudoir and portraits. And then finally, so as I'm thinking through a person who comes to like a bride is coming to my website, right? That's my primary target, right? That's who I want to have on my website. They look at the homepage and so often people are like, okay, great, but that's like their best work. That's what they want you to see. Okay, let's go into the portfolio. This is the stuff that they're curating and they want you to see. What about the blog? What, is he still active? Is he still doing stuff, right? And so then if they kind of flip through the blog, they can see more recent material, right? They can see more than the images I would simply put into the portfolio pages. Right? So you can kind of go deeper. Each click takes you deeper into this rabbit trail of the imagery. Um, and at that point, then I think if they've fallen in love with the images, I'm hoping that they finally say like, okay, well, who's the guy behind the camera? So if they want more information, then they want to know about me, the photographer. So they go to the about page, um, get to know a little bit about me. I try to keep it lighthearted because I kind of, I mean, <laughs> that. That's me. Um, I, uh, so this stays pretty close to um, who I am. Um, I think it's pretty authentic to the experience they'll have with me. And then at the end, again, there's a call to action. Um, and then um, beyond that, like all these, all these info pages are going to just take them further. Like, okay, so this is the guy. Okay, that's interesting. But now I want to hear from other people about what their experience is. Um, and so then I have the testimonials page. And none of, like, none of this is rocket science. Like none of these pages are, are new to any of us here, I think. You know, everyone gets these pages and that's partly very intentional. I don't want any of these pages to be confusing. I don't want any of them to instantly like not know, okay, so what am I looking at? You know, they're looking at a blog, they're looking at a portfolio, they're looking at an about page, a testimony page. It makes sense, but the reason I'm doing it like this is because I want them to be, want it to be easy for them to understand what they're looking at and how it's important for their decision. So each of these um, are uh, obviously just reviews. Some of them are direct from clients and some of them are from Yelp and we just kind of bring them together in a really clean, clear way. And that scrolls all the way down. Again, call to action, reserve your wedding date. Um, and then finally, all those call to action buttons lead you to this last one, which is the contact and packages. And there's like this, just a form, right? I have forms that lead into a spreadsheet that clicks into all my processes on the back end, right? I want to know where they're getting uh, this information from. Um, so this is, this is really key for me. It's all going that direction. There's nothing. I mean, honestly, this isn't like a $5,000 WordPress designed site. This is really clear. It's really easy. It's very simple. And that's really important for me. Um, 
And then, you know, clients, right? The last piece of it is just clients where people can see their uh, images, right? I've got some design pages that, um, and that kind of help with the login because they're going to pick favorites and choose stuff. Um, online payments, they can make payments directly on the website um, using credit card or Venmo or whatever. Um, and then selecting their favorites and placing orders. These are just custom pages. And I'll just click into a couple of them, I guess. Um, these are custom pages that allow you to just in a really simple way, um, explore different features of what you can do with uh, my business, right? So selecting favorites, really important for your web, or sorry, your, uh, your album design. And then obviously placing orders. This usually isn't for my clients. This is usually for my clients' parents or for their grandparents. Right, like I just want them to be able to watch a video with a one, two, three step, and just make it make it super easy. Um, so I mean, that's that's my design, right? That's how I've set up the website, um, and it's really worked for my business. I think everyone will have a different, a slightly different flow to the way that their website works. But at least for a wedding photographer in the Bay Area, um, the San Francisco Bay Area, like that, that is, this has really served me well. Uh, in my business. No, I think it's really, I mean, really amazing setup. And one of the things that comes across very clear is that you are a wedding photographer for hire. Like if that doesn't come across really clear on the homepage, like I, it's, it's, you can't miss that you're a wedding photographer for hire. One of the things that I see people struggle with is if we do different types of photography and work for hire, but then we also do landscape and fine art and we're trying to set it up um, it becomes confusing when you kind of mix that stuff together. Whereas like everything's under portfolio. So just, do you have any suggestions? Like how would yeah. you distinguish between those two? Would you distinguish between those two? I mean, that's a pretty, that's a pretty common experience for photographers because they fall in love with photography. Right. And then because it's such a easy thing to just spread that love across sports landscape um, you know, safari, um, you're doing family portraits, you're doing, you're doing boudoir, senior, maternity, weddings, um, you know, mitzvahs. I mean, you're doing tons of work because you love photography and you love people, you love the outdoors. My biggest thing is that that's all about you, right? That's about me. The question is about the other person. The question is, that person that's coming to you, what are they coming to you for? Are they coming to you for that safari trip? Are you leading safari trips? Uh, like my buddy, Jeff Cable, I think he was on here recently and he does sports photography and he does mitzvahs and he does these safari trips. Well, um, he interlinks stuff, but the focus for each website is specific to that genre, right? So like I have actually considered peeling off pieces of my business, parts of my portfolio and creating a different web experience for them because it needs to be in my mind, very centralized and very simple, right? If someone is saying like, well, okay, so what does he, what does he do? What's the most important thing for him? Then I've kind of missed the mark just a little bit. I haven't totally belly flopped, but I definitely feel like it's not clear. And that, that for me is a stumbling block for the, for the, for the person on the website. So I would recommend um, really deciding which one is the most important for you. And maybe that's the thing that you love the most, that gets you most passionate, or maybe it's the thing that makes you the most money. We all love money, let's be honest. It helps us live our lives. It makes us happy. Um, you know, it's also the worst thing in the world, right? It's also like, it's the worst, you know, but there's a different conversation. I, uh, I, I think, you have to decide what's the most important for your life and for your business. Um, and then I would recommend uh, focusing. I would focus on the brand piece, the portfolio piece that um, you really need to or want to. And then I would probably either let the other things kind of either become secondary and let that show in the design or simply peel them off and make a separate experience for those different portfolios. I love it. I love it because I get to so many websites and, and, and I do site review Tuesday, every Tuesday that I can come across so many websites where I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm trying to tell if you're a photographer for hire 
or if you sure. have the website just to sell your work. And so I think what you said there is decide what's most important and what's mm -hmm. primary, build the website around that, and then make sure that everything else is secondary. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, quick, a couple of questions from chat really quick, and then we'll keep sure. moving. Uh, Roxanne Bay said, um, how has the pandemic affected your business? <laughs> <laughs> Roxanne. <laughs> Jeez. Um, okay. So everybody is affected by the pandemic, hence the pan. Otherwise it'd be the solo demic. Um, I am massively impacted by this pandemic, right? Uh, I have had to pivot quite a lot. I've shot a couple COVID weddings in the meantime. Um, and it's been a whole new ball game, right? It's become so like hashtag real talk, um, revenues down right? 2020 is going to suck. It's like, I'm ready for 2021 or 2022. Let's get that vaccine folks. Um, but revenue's down and I'm focusing on other stuff, right? It's an opportunity. It sucks, but it is also an opportunity to focus in on different stuff for us, like different solo projects, different um, revenue makers that could be something that we talk about later on uh, in 2021, right? This is the time to do the work because, you know, you're going to get busy. All my weddings, not all, a majority of my weddings have pushed out to 2021, right? And they've postponed. And that means that they've booked and I have that revenue, but I collect 50, 50. So 50% comes two months prior to the wedding date. And those aren't happening until next year. So like the belt is tightening. So Roxanne, um, like, man, it is real. It hurts. And um, in the meantime, I am kind of uh, preparing assets to be able to deliver more portrait work um, because that portrait work is hopefully going to, it's not the big weddings that I'm going to be able to kind of pay my mortgage with, but it's the little stuff, right? It's the mini session kind of stuff um, that I'm having to kind of develop a little bit more. And it's a little more muscle memory. So it's a good learning opportunity. Um, that's a really positive spin on like, man, I'm being forced to do some really hard, difficult stuff that I'm not used to. And it's, uh, it's, it's, I'm ready for 2021 too, at the same time. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Question. Yeah. Great question. Uh, one more question and then we'll kind of jump back. Katie wants to know uh, more about your custom pages, specifically the testimonial one, um, sure. kind of how you set that up, if you have any uh, recommendations on custom pages. So I have huge, I mean, it's really tables, tables. I'm telling you, man, it is great because it lets you, it really lets you space things uh, for the micromanager, right? Um, and that's me, right? I, I want to, oh yeah, thanks. Um, it allows me to space my images in a vertical way on the left and then have the text kind of spread out and using the space on the right. Um, and then it allows me also to space things in a non-crazy way. Like it doesn't, I don't have to go in and like enter, 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 right? It allows me to um, move the sections, the blocks in the text or sorry, in the table to be kind of auto verticalized. That's not a word, but I'm going to lean into it right now. It basically goes as, as deep as it needs to, to really work with the image or the longer text. Cause some of them are longer text, and it's just like, you know, I just got to have some more space to, to work with these testimonials. Um, and so that's what I've, that's what I've found to be really useful. Um, there's a lot of folks who have done it differently and I think those are beautiful as well. But for me, I, I like it simple, not too much interaction. I want the, the, um, I'd like the uh, the user to be able to kind of scroll through quickly and easily without a lot of clicks, just to read through stuff. Um, so I've made it really simple and clean. That's kind of a theme you'll see in some of my design stuff. There's a lot of good ways to do this. Um, some of them are like beautifully and uh, elegantly complicated. Um, and, and some of them are just clean and simple. And I've kind of leaned it that way. Really cool. Yeah. And I just went to white gold photography. Um, so if you guys watching, if you didn't know whitegoldphotography.com is actually a Zenfolio examples page. I threw the link out in chat. You can actually go there and get the code to create. I don't, 
it's not exactly like this, but it is, it's kind of similar. And then you can go and modify it with like your own images and stuff like that. Dude, are you following some of these comments? These like, from... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys keep throwing your chat, your questions in there. We're going to, we're going to get to, uh, we're going to get to them. I promise. You think we should ever tell them about the moose or should we just kind of tease it out for a while? Oh, you know, what? Tease it. That's, tease that's, it. That's, that's your story to tell. <laughs> honestly um, i've never even heard the story like the only time that you and i actually met in person back when you were still here at zenfolio yeah, was yeah. at a trade show first time <laughs> we met and i was super into impractical jokers and i think before i even said hi to you i stuck my nose on you <laughs> <laughs> i actually remember that i remember that <laughs> Yeah, that was a fun trade show. <clears throat> uh, okay, well, let's talk really quick about um, just some examples. So you kind of gave us a walkthrough of your site. Um, I did some stuff to my demo site. And maybe I'll just kind of let you go through and kind of compare and contrast your site with this demo site. So I tried to make this demo site really close to a lot of things that I see. Obviously, you guys, I did make my demo site a little a little bad on purpose so that we could kind of have some things to talk about going back and forth. But uh, I'm going to let Evan kind of do some comparing and contrasting between the way his side is set up and the way that my demo side is set up. Just yeah. so you guys can kind of get an idea of a really good example and a really bad example. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. I'll take that. Um, I got to move the little zoom controller at the top and I, and I can't, I think that's, I think you're going to have to move. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Um, I will say something near and dear to my heart, maybe Robert will be kind enough to bring me back for SEO someday, um, but uh, 410 aerial photography and inspection, how often do you need to write on your blog to make it meaningful weekly, monthly? Um, that's a really fun, fun conversation. Um, I think personally, it's more about the quality than the quality, than the quantity, but that's an argument that is, I mean, it, 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 I personally think that a baseline should be monthly um, and a couple times a month is a really happy place for Google robots um, to index your site. And then beyond that, if you can do it regularly, that's what I would recommend because it makes it for a schedule and a calendar uh, for the robo Googles to come and find and index your site and allows them to know when to come back and expect that regular update. Because if you do it um, infrequently, then they learn that you're infrequent, right? But that regularity and using the SEO rich terms is really, really important. So more to come on that, hopefully another time. But I just wanted to uh, touch on that because I think it's really important. Um, okay, so let me just jump over. I'll go over to white gold. Um, let me see, is it gonna let me click? Yeah, okay. So um, I'm just gonna wait, wrong one, right? I need to go over to Zenfolio Live. So I personally love the hippotography. I mean, WTF, mate, that's a pretty amazing, <laughs> I mean, what a logo. You like um, that? Maybe it's hip photography. Yeah. Should it be hip photography or should it be hippo photography? I don't know, but there's a, that's a game changer in my opinion. I so, just saw, I saw the moose and I thought I would try to get something close. I know, close. it's a thing of beauty. Um, so I love that. So the first thing I would say is obviously I really like the uh, edge to edge. It's something I've done and I, I, you know, I really enjoy that. I think it's important. Um, I would say the book a session right in the middle, bottom center is probably a thing of debate. I like the book a session. I think it's really important. I'm probably going to add it to my own website very soon here. Um, but I would probably say too soon on the homepage. Um, not, not, not for everybody, but for me, when someone hits the homepage, because I really want to get into the mindset of who this person is. Um, if they're coming to the homepage, then um, they haven't actually made that um, commitment with me yet, right? <clears throat> so that I would probably, I'm probably going to save that for different pages. But let me go into, so that, you know what, we'll stay there because the book me, book a session, like we are already pushing hard into, um, hey guys, book me, book me, book me, book me, right? So that first, there's, that's the call to action, right? But if all they've seen 
And actually, there's more here because <laughs> it opened up another page, which I think is slightly confusing. And all it says <laughs> is to see the services I offer, and this should be capitalized, the T, by the way. To see the services I offer, please click the blue book a session button on the bottom of the page. Like this page is just unnecessary, right? It's just not, it's not important. And now I have a, um, a separate uh, uh, tab open, um, which just shows more of the Z. And while I love Zenfolio, it really should have a, a graphic up in the, in the browser tab here. Um, you can put that in your settings. And so then, cause like you see my little moose up here, man, I wonder, wonder why you chose that moose. Um, the other thing I'd say is here's an opportunity lost, right? So here you have this beautiful photograph. And then, and then what? Like, it's not a, oh, sweet, but like, I actually realized that there's an arrow on the left. So I could scroll, um, Good use of white space. That's funny, Lynn. Um, I could, okay, so now I've pressed the play button. So that's an opportunity lost, right? It could it could just roll and that's one less click that people have to get confused by. So that's, that's some stuff to think about for your homepage. Um, but then if we go to galleries, um, I'm gonna click in there and then um, waiting for it, waiting for it, galleries. Okay. So galleries, this is confusing to me immediately because it says galleries, but then it says clients. So I guess this is client galleries and I'm not sure what these are. I know this is a proof because it's got a big fat proof on it, um, <laughs> which is just beautiful, Robert. That's a really nice look. Um, <laughs> um, but then when I scroll over this stuff, you know, like the reason, Robert's doing this stuff, right? And this is designed in a way that's, that it's just funky, right? It doesn't make sense because I'm, I'm clicking in to see 2020, but it doesn't have a, um, a thumbnail on it. And then the same with all this stuff. And then I don't actually know what these categories are until I scroll over, but because they're categories, you want to be able to see all of them at once, my personal opinion. Otherwise I have to wait and scroll and figure out. And the other thing is like, there's just tons of stuff here. Right? There's engagements, there's family portraits, there's real estate, there's seniors, there's sports, and there's weddings. So obviously, they're more um, <clears throat> engagements is more important to them, which is funny because engagements are the pre predecessor of weddings. Um, but let's click into engagements. Oh, I don't know if I can do this anymore, dude. This is how, this is tough. <laughs> um, okay, so. Yeah. Um, John and Elizabeth, we just keep drilling in, right? I don't yeah. want to keep drilling into the unknown because at this point, like I haven't seen anything and I'm like four pages deep. Yeah. Yes. Finally, there's photographs. Um, there's no caption at the top. At least we have a name, which is good. Um, but for portfolios, you know, I would recommend leaning away from the client's names because, you know, customers or potential prospects, Brides and grooms don't want to know who that is. Um, they want to, you know, they, they want to know what it is and where it is and how they can do stuff like this. So um, I'll go back. Generally, as I navigate this website, you know, there's like stuff here that is just kind of a little confusing. Thumbnails, I think, um, are really important. <laughs> I think a gallery that's empty is really sad. I mean, that's like, <laughs> that's just Funny, right? A gallery that's empty is 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 like a coffee cup that's delivered to you with no coffee in it. I just feel like that's sad. Um, so galleries. Do you, do you use client galleries in your portfolios ever, or like so? Like for me personally. Um, yeah, I, brother. Yeah. So typically, I don't show my client galleries from my site menu. Usually, I um, keep those like direct email, but I'll set up like a portfolio drop down. That's just oh, my, I see what you're saying. My okay, personal I see. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. So I I do keep it separate, right? So my portfolio is really there to show off some of the work that I want to draw them in. It's not client specific, right? But I do have the the page that allows them to go. Them being the clients, the bride and groom, to go find their own specific event, 
right? That's really, really important. But I have that for them to find stuff. But if I'm honest, I send them the direct link because I really like the fact that you can have like your own phone app and deliver those images as well. Um, so, you know, frankly, um, if I'm, if I go back to kind of the navigation of all this stuff, right? Like this is not super clear. I think there's gold, white gold. Uh, there's some gold deep in there, but you got to click through and you got to get there. And frankly, at this point, you've lost me, right? If I'm on Yelp and I'm like, open a new tab, open a new tab, open a new tab. I got three photographers up and I've already had to click like eight times to see an actual photo. Um, like I'm just not gonna, I'm going to go to the next tab and look at the next photographer, right? So yes. you've already lost them. I'd say get yes. to the good stuff quicker and with, with clarity around what it is that they're looking at. Right. And then also like a call to action, like almost every page should be like, okay, so what next? If they like what they see, then where should they go to, to ultimately book me? Right. Um, I also think it's really interesting to have galleries on here and portfolio. Obviously galleries, I think now in hindsight, is now telling me that galleries is probably for clients, question mark. Yeah. Again, unclear. But portfolio is supposed to show your best work. And it's like, I mean, it really is. It's a beautiful train wreck, right? You can't take your eyes away from it, but it's also just a ultimate horror. Um, there's a copyright here. It's inconsistent. Um, again, I can't see which one of these, what they are until I scroll over them. This placeholder <laughs> it's just rough um you know there's some work to be done here right plus that there isn't a lot of focus on a particular genre you got engagements uh wedding stock photography which couldn't be anything more to the point but or like sorry there couldn't be anything more in contrast and then alaya um which is a single person and i, I guess that's a a, por a portrait session question mark um, so there's a lot here that is, is kind of a struggle. Um, and I would say, um, if this person would take a step back and think about the experience that someone is, is having when they come to their website, then I think that would offer them a lot of fruit. That would be really insightful for them to think through how the person is experiencing and what roadblocks or hiccups. And honestly, the best way to do this is to go look at other photographers' websites photographers' websites that you enjoyed, um, go back and just like copy what they do, right? And and like the, the you know, what is that phrase? It's like um, uh, the highest form of flattery is copycat. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying like, hey, go snatch someone's photo and put it on and put your name on it. Like, let's not, let's not be illegal here, folks. But I would say um, that, you know, there's never been a, um, a an original idea there really is just a lot of great ideas that we all kind of reuse and use for our own um, and make them our own. So, you know, I'll stop, I'll stop there. There's a lot here. Um, you know, wow, we've just changed and there's a new site menu as well. Um, <laughs> so there's a lot here. And honestly, we could spend the whole hour kind of um, decoupling different pieces of all of this and saying whether we should or should not use these features. Zenfolio is a real toolkit of lots of stuff, but the question is whether you should use it or not. Right, right. And I, and I think the, the key thing that I've taken away from this conversation today is really um, when you're setting up your site, like you need to know what the purpose of it is and then you need to, des to design it in a way to get people yeah. to do that thing as quickly as possible, right? And, and this site was set up to be a total train wreck because I see a lot of sites that just don't have any purpose behind them. And so I think comparing this to how your site was set up, how it was super easy to navigate, like the portfolio was right there. It was really easy to see your images mm -hmm. to, to navigate and you use the drop down. Like this site didn't even utilize sure. any drop downs at all. So that navigation is just, um, just it's, it's a hazard. Whereas when you're going through here and navigating through here, it's, it's super easy. So I think the biggest thing is thinking about the purpose, figuring out a way that you can get people to do what you want them to do as fast as possible. Yeah. Um, 
I know we have a lot of questions. So let's see. Do we want to tackle the moose story? Like I'm curious about the yeah, moose story because yeah, yeah. I've, okay, okay. I've never we've, heard this. We've we've so. uh, we've held it out long enough. By the way, Len, thank you. You're in my head. Um, what is it? Imitation is the highest form of flattery. There you go. Yeah. Nailed it. I do that all the time. I'm like, isn't there this phrase that like something along those lines? And I just butcher it. Yeah. Um, and then someone smarter than me comes along and is like, oh, by the way, it's it's, it's this. And so it's a great way to learn. <laughs> Ooh. Um, so the story about the moose is, you know, I don't know, something like 10 years ago, we were rebranding and, you know, we just wanted to have an icon. We wanted to have something that was, uh, meaningful for, and by we, I'm including myself and my wife. Uh, she's huge into a lot of the thought process that we go through for my business. Um, and so we were kind of thinking about like, what is the icon that we want to associate with some of the work that we do. And for us, you know, um, we were thinking through that process and we went to Yellowstone and um, basically had this um, like, oh crap moment with a moose where we saw this young baby moose, um, you call it a calf, was hanging out over yonder, maybe about, I don't know, 30 feet away, um, which is not far. Um, it's not far away. Um, and it was amazing. Like, it's just gorgeous. And then as you're in Yellowstone, um, you know, you think about bears, right? Bears, if you see a cub, like beware, super cute, but the mama is around there somewhere. And we thought like, oh, I wonder if moose are like bears. Uh, should we be careful because the calf has the mama nearby? And moose are way big. Um, so uh, we looked around and we kind of triangulated a little bit. And like right over there, maybe 40 or 50 feet away is the mama and she's staring at us. She's humongous. And she's like head down looking at us. Like I'm pretty sure she's going to eat us <laughs> or kill us or something. Um, and I got, I snapped off some photographs because I'm a photographer. Um, of both animals and then the mama comes and joins the calf and we kind of slowly back up and just kind of remove ourselves from the situation um, but I've got the what is it I got the the um, 7200 on and got got some nice shots of both mom and baby together and um, I think in retrospect after we changed our pants um, we were able to say like this was gorgeous and it was a really important moment for us of like my heart rate spiked and we got some really gorgeous photographs and it's such an interesting animal <laughs> that especially in California is very unique I mean someone in Colorado would be like oh yeah it's like deer they're like everywhere um but for us it was just really important and it was a beautiful moment for us in Yellowstone so we just kind of uh thought that we would bring that into the design and it is actually a good talking point for folks because in California where I'm located um, you know, it, it's, it's different and it's interesting. I think it's really, um, like as far as design and uh, branding goes, it's genius too, because like as photographers, we do like the, the aperture symbol, the lens, the camera right. silhouette, all of those right. kinds of things. You had somebody, a business card that has a moose on it. Obviously you want them to remember your name. Maybe they don't remember your name, but they're going to be like, oh yeah, you're the guy with the moose on your card. It's That's genius. exactly it. That's yeah, exactly it. Because I realized brilliant. that with that aperture sign that we all love, you know, it's, we all love it. And yeah. so it's going to get lost in, in that pile of business cards that we recycle. Yep. Yep. Whereas the moose card probably going to get set over to the side. Could. Yeah. I think, I think I might have to use that hippo logo now, the more that I think it's about so it. Good. It's so good. It's so good. You know, let's, we don't have time for this, but if anyone goes to that website, what is it? It's like, um, <clears throat> Zenfolio Live. That? Yeah, I'll throw it Zenfolio. out. Zenfolio.com or something like that. We'll link it. And in the about page, basically Robert just like destroys the moose with the hippo uh, in the about text. Just that's a that's an Easter egg for someone if they want to go check it out and they get deep enough into that website and can deal with the train wreck. Um, yeah. Go to the about page. It's pretty. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty cool. funny. I'll throw it out in chat for you guys right now so you have it. It's it's awesome. Uh, and then I'll link to the video below for you guys who are watching the recorded version of this. Um, we got a lot of questions in a few minutes. Uh, let's yeah. see. Corey Woods, is the contact page on your site a custom page? 
Yes, so, it is. That form. Yeah, absolutely. So let me go back and share that. Uh, right Corey, now. the background on that is that um, I use 17 hats uh, because it is a very robust back end for running your business. And um, so that will uh, give you kind of the form fields for you to just bloop, drop onto a custom page. And then all of that funnels into uh, 17 hats and sends an automated um, note to my email with all those form fields and a text message to my phone. Um, so it's pretty neato. Really cool. Uh, let's let's see. It's not uh, free, <laughs> but uh, I have some free options. Um, but yes, I, but there, go ahead. I actually had a nightmare that became reality. I because I was on a free option um, for years, I uh, hit a I hit a max limit for people communicating with me, and mm. I didn't clear it out or something. And so it wasn't sending me the notifications. So during um, engagement time, it was like October, November, December during the holidays, I missed like, I think it was like 250 emails from inquiries. And this was a few years back and uh, it was bad. And it was like one of those like, <gasps> Holy crap moments. Um, it was bad. And so I've always now just paid the money and just yeah. done it right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a nightmare, man. And you, it was. <laughs> and you probably didn't even know for a little bit because. I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know for three months. Oh, 250 yeah. emails, inquiries. Um, oh. Let's see. Lloyd Gray says when placing edge to edge photos on the main page, um, is that a slideshow? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really just a layout that you can choose mm -hmm. in the Zen uh, formatting options. When you're in your customized um, visitor view, you can basically just choose that as the layout. Um, and it's just the, the full page slideshow. And then it kind of resizes based on the size of that person's computer or browser, which is nice. Sometimes it cuts off people's heads and stuff. And like, I'm willing to live with that. Um, because of the experience they have overall. I know there's other people who decide not to do that because it impacts the uh, the experience they have, like the integrity of the photograph, because I know it does it does crop, right? It, it'll crop stuff, something. Mm -hmm. um, but I have decided uh, as a business choice that the experience with the full page is more important than losing a bit of crop at top or bottom. Yeah, and I think as long as you, you know, strategically select your images, kind of knowing that and going forward, you can yeah. you can get pretty close to not having that. And honestly, uh, like that photo right there, I cropped their head anyways. So, right. <laughs> so like I'm into it. <laughs> Absolutely. Lynn, what is the craziest request from a bride or groom that you've ever had? That's a rough one. Oh, good grief. I mean... Um, we, we're out of time, guys. We need like another hour for that one. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's there's like weird stuff. Like people would ask um, to, like someone wanted to make a music video. And like, I thought I was shooting your wedding. Like. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> he was like trying to pull in different people to do research. Like, all right, well, we can do this. I mean, I do video too. Like we could, let's do this thing. But like. Re really? I mean, <laughs> so there's funny. stuff like that, but there's also stuff like um, we go through the entire process and this is more of a Bradzilla story. Like we go through the whole process of asking the right questions and making sure that we're ahead of the game and knowing what the customer wants. But then like after the wedding, they just want more photos of, of, of like, um, you know, they want more stories uh, or they, sorry, they want more photos of bride and groom looking right at the camera, which as you know, like I have, I think it's no photos on my wedding portfolio page. Not a single one, I think, has the bride and groom looking at the camera. So my question is like, what? what? There's a disconnect there. And it's yeah. also a nightmare because like now you've shot the wedding <laughs> and you've shot it exactly how they said they wanted it and how you would normally shoot it. And now they come back and, and they're like, no, we want it different. And you're like, oh, so. 
<laughs> it's fine. We gave him some money back. We did a like extra shot and like, you know, <sighs> avoided the Yelp review, but you got you got time for two more questions and then I'm I in. know you Let's got go. you in? Okay, cool. Um, so the next question is um how from this is from Lynn, how long did it take you to get your site the way that you want it? it took me a while. Right. I tried a bunch of different stuff. Um, like I think I've had it similar to this flow. I've changed custom pages and stuff like that. Um, but I've had it similar to this flow since like I want to say 2014, like you know, years, right? I've had it, I've had it like this for quite a while, um, because of the way that I want people to experience the website. Um, but getting to that point, you, you know, honestly, it probably you know, spread out over a couple of years. If I, th if I take like the sessions where I like deep dove and really re reworked stuff, it probably took me a couple of months to really keep engineering on it and banging away on it. Um, but, you know, I think some of the beauty of Zen is that it's WYSIWYG, right? You can, you can just make stuff look the way you want it. And I don't have to be, I don't have to be like a pro at, web design i just don't right. i just need to know what my customers want and then i'll set it up that way which is good because i'm a photographer not a, <laughs> not, a not a web designer yeah and i and i think one of the things that's important for us to think about too is like for me at least i think that my website is never finished yeah. it's in constant under construction because design trends change sure. technology changes so it's like this constant fluid thing that you constantly have to mind. It's just like your photography yeah. skills, your gear, yeah. everything. It's you're constantly going to have to be on top of it, maintaining it, making sure yeah. that you know you keep it up to date. Good question, though. Last question from your good buddy Zach. Oh, no. <laughs> he says you look like a model. Have you ever been in an advertisement? <laughs> that's the that's the question you're going to go out on. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, dude. I model all day, every day. That's my side hustle. I just, I just, no, Zach, I model for you, baby. And that's it. Uh, no. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, hey, I know you got to run any last minute things, anything you want to leave anybody with? Um, you know, honestly, I think it's just, um, we're in this together. I mean, that's the message all the time, but during the season of COVID, you know, all, all of us are in this together. We're all kind of in a similar spot, right? And that spot being work from home. Um, so if you need anything or just want to say hi or got questions, you know, feel free. Got a contact page. Um, or you can just drop me a, you know, drop me a line. Um, Evan at evanchungphoto.com. It's real. It'll get to me. Just a guy trying to make some money with doing something he loves. So um, feel free. We're in this together. Drop me a line awesome. If you awesome. Hey, man, thank you so much for hanging out with me, Evan. It's been a blast. Looks like everybody wants you to come back on. So I'm sure we're going to be <laughs> doing this again, uh, hopefully, if you're up for it. But I'm up um, for it. awesome. Awesome, man. Well, thanks so much. I appreciate it. And thank you guys for hanging out with us today. All the questions, you guys are amazing. I'll see you guys again on Tuesday. And then coming up next Thursday, I'm going to have Kurt on. We're going to be talking about uh, contactless workflow. So make sure you guys come back next week as well. All right. Thanks a lot, Evan. Have a thanks good weekend. Have a good weekend, you guys. Take care.